Eyo olono nu ya kea. Na kapi iko o li lo. Aulu i te motu a kui hawe. Eyo i kapala o mai eva. Na kamo kamala la walu. Kui te motu a kui mau. Eyo o kanalo. Na puko a o te he o kanalo. Aulu i te motu a kui ka hola. Eyo la nai. Eyo no la au a o ka ulu la au. Aulu i te motu a kui la nai. Eyo o te puli o o. Ka motu o na taunga. Na alai nui a hina. Aulu i te motu a kui molokai. Eyo la roa i ea. Ta uhi o kaku i hewa. Aulu i te motu a kui o wako. Eyo kamawai lua lani. Na me e o mano kalani po. Aulu i te motu a kui kawai. Eyo e kaunu. Na kama i laila o te mua kākala o kalāna kea o te pūpū ka hele lani. Aulu i te motu a kui ni i hau. Eyo e Hawai i ka mole o ka hanua. Eyo e Hawai i te piko o kanaka. Eyo e Hawai i nui a kea Hawai i kua huli Hawai i loa. Hawai i kalani o wā kea. E kūkā we kā kono e to hoi hoi mai ana i teia mau vehi maka mai. Na maka o e kū. Hei ala. Hei oli e. Hei ola. Kalani o pū'u was a paramount chief of Hawaii Island. There's a hint in his name, Opu'u, which talks about him being a Po'olua child, a child with two fathers. And that Opu'u signaling and a connection, a very strong connection to O'ahu. Most people associate Kalani Opu'u with the lineages of Hawaii Island and his epic father, Kalani Nui Mau Mau, also known as Lono Ikamakahiki. I love that Kalani Opu'u is a, a, a child that, that brings these two worlds, the O'ahu, the older lineages of Hawaii, and the newer lineages um, to Hawaii um, together, you know, in, in one man. Most people are familiar with Kamehameha as Na'iau Puni, the, the one uh, true king that united all of the islands of Hawaii. What people do not know is how Kalani Opu'u, who is his uncle, uh, half-brother to Kamehameha's father, Keua, uh, had hanaid or raised Kamehameha in his, his royal court. His leadership skills are very profound. He is schooled or learned in the mastery of politics, in strategies of war, in natural resource management, in terms of feeding the populace. There's a lot of wisdom and learning lessons uh, we can look back to for the great legacy and contributions of Kalani Opu'u, the king, uh, to a kingmaker. They were the closest things to gods living on earth, especially a paramount chief like Kalani Opu'u. Depending on the chief, the commoner would have to either prostrate themselves or remove themselves from that area. To know the presence of a chief uh, by a commoner site was very important. The Ahula consisted of 
a net backing made out of oluna, as well as the feathers that were gathered from the upland birds. The birds that were used in the in the creation of these feathered garments, um, they're they're very small. Uh, many of the birds are are no bigger than the palm of your hand, and the feathers themselves would be um, quite small. There are thousands and thousands of bundles that are uh, used in the creation of a, an ahula or a mahiole. So the abundance that is woven into this ahula and mahiole is not only what you can see on the surface. Below that lies the backing, the foundation, that also takes a forest to create and time and a generation to make. It is truly a symbol of our maukatu makai, our wauakua, all the way down to our waukanaka in our practices in Hawaii. When we make anything with our hands, yeah, our mind, you know, our, our hearts, yeah, and our all has to be, has to be clear, has to be focused, and can't be kind of muddied by any negative thoughts, bad energy. The result will show up in the thing that we make. When you get to see the ahula and the mahione, you would know that the most mayo hands, hearts and souls put that together. What we know was that our ancestors had greeted Captain Cook in a very traditional way of gathering of canoes. Uh, some of the accounts uh, shared that there were over a thousand canoes in the bay at that time. And you can imagine Captain Cook as a foreigner to these islands seeing all of these these people coming out to greet them. It's nearing the end of Makahiki season, right? And, and Makahiki season is not only a time of, of peace, but it's a, a time of, of diplomacy. It's a, it's a time of relationship building. Kanyopu'u took off of, from his shoulders and from his head um, the ahu'ula and the mahiole and, and gifted them to, to cook. In his diplomatic gesture, he really catapulted uh, not just only his people, uh, but he established diplomatic relations with Captain Cook as a foreigner. There's different accounts that recite slightly different um, histories of this part, but there's a scuffle and Captain Cook is killed. But Everything that was gifted to him makes it back to the ships, you know, and the ships are actually allowed to leave. After the death of Cook, the cloak returned to England and it went into the hands of private collectors and some small museums. And then in 1912, Lord St. Oswald, who was one of those small collectors, he offered it to the Dominion Museum in New Zealand. And then in the 1990s, when the new museum was built on the waterfront of Wellington, it found a new place. It was one of those things that you couldn't just put away in storage. It had to be on display because people knew about it. Far below, the visitors welcomed ashore by Tiatiawa. <laughs> Then began the procession to Te Papa's Marae. But if you think we're just opening today a building with valuable things in it, then you'd be wrong. The treasures here are not just objects, images, and sounds. They are also memories and ideas. I was part of a delegation that actually bear witness to the opening of Te Papa at the time and the unveiling of Kalani Opu's cape. There have been uh, a number of hula halaos themselves, individual artisans, um, community cultural practitioners who actually have heard about uh, Kalani Opu's cape in Te Papa. He performed an oli to the cloak, which really, I guess, was the start of a new period where Hawaiians would have greater engagement, not only with Te Papa, but um, with the cloak in the Hawaiian collections. It, it touched something in, in, in my heart saying that, you know, the importance of treasures and what museums have to their cultures and their people. 
you could see the emotion and the, the real sense of longing and connection to that the ahuula. And you realize there's something this, this is really important. This is really important to Hawaiian people. For us, it's Papa year. With uh, it's as much about how we can honor the past and respect the past for the, for the future. These treasures have immense cultural value for the Hawaiian people. And we believe it's our vision that uh, changing hearts, changing minds, changing lives. Uh, what sits at the heart of that is is connecting. Leadership on Te Papa actually broached the subject of, do you think the Ahuala and Mahiole should go back home? And uh, it was important that during those discussions there, we talked about, you know, the significance of colonial food, cloak and, uh, and helmet in terms of Hawaiian uh, identity and, and for contemporary identity. As stunned as we were, all of us sitting in that room, you know, it was time. One of our OHA's primary responsibility is advocacy. And in this case, certainly uh, it, was, it wasn't just the Office of Foreign Affairs, but I think uh, we helped to elevate the voice of the community. And in doing so, we are able to share the mana. We are able to share uh, and recount uh, that historic moment in 1779, and we make it real in the 21st century. Finally tonight, Chief of Hawaii Kalani Pu'u's own feathered cloak and helmet that he gifted to Captain James Cook back in the 1770s mm -hmm. uh, will be returned to Hawaii. We look at it as really a great opportunity to help promote and share cultural vibrancy. As, as well as to help Hawaii as a whole thrive in understanding Native Hawaiian culture and heritage. A group from Hawaii will go to Aotearoa or New Zealand next month and go through protocol and ceremonies to accept the royal objects. Before we, before we board, uh, we just wanted to have a small gathering. Uh, there's different groups here, uh, representing Vision New Zealand, uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Hawaiian Airlines, my heart is full of aroha uh, knowing that important treasures will start the journey back home. Our relations from Hawaii, the Bishop Museum, Chairperson, Oha, who have made this possible. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've been to many functions here at Te Papa where the Mokomokai has come back. This is the very first I've been at a function at Te Papa where they are actually giving a poem back. It was very moving, very moving to share our aroha, our grieving that it's going home, but a, a grieving of joy, joy because we know what it's like and something of ours was taken away in many, many years for it to come home. We have a, a common ancestral lineage. What you see in Māori in terms of their tuturu, their perseverance, is, is very similar to Hawaiian. Our strength, our mana, our wairua, our uhane, our spirit uh, is alive today because of that specific cultural connection to our ancestors in honoring them, uh, giving them life, even as they, they, they rest. 
When people ask why would we let something so valuable leave, leave our collection, it's about realizing that these things have a value in other places. And while the, the Ahuula has been part of conversations and visits in our part of the world for such a long time, more than a century, letting this Tonga go, letting it um, return to its people is very much about realizing its potential to do good work out there in the world, not just rest in one place where it's far from its point of origin, far from the people who are connected to it the most. I hope that it will expose and rejuvenate the culture of the Hawaiians. I hope that this is an example of what the feeling of Wairua can do. It has a living ethos of its own. It, have a, it has a modi of its own. And that modi um, can only rejuvenate and encourage the Hawaiian people to be a proud culture, which you already are. But this will even add more rejuvenation to who you are. A priceless feather cloak and helmet once gifted to Captain Cook are being returned to Hawaii. The items have been in New Zealand for nearly a century, and today a Hawaiian contingent came to take them home. James Ramsley was at the scene. Hey, hello, hey. Ke kanaka. 
maka bailua ho iyo ke kanaka a maka uhane malaila ho ika ula ana ano leila ke yau iui ana e vai hone i mua o ko mahea ke la ula i loko kako i ke yala mahea ke la ula i loko kako mauhana o ke yala nuka mea i na a ohe pili ka ula O ke la kupuna, me ka ula, o kakako hana o ke ya la, e lole vale no. E papale vale no. A ole na e ke la e lole, e ahumula ke la o ke li inui. A ole ke la e papale, e mahi ole, pale pale po'o, po'o i i, po'o kapu kapu, o kalani o kuhu. Uh, I remember one person who was on the trip saying, you know, when we turned up on the Hokulea uh, to Aotearoa 25 years ago, we were led around by the Maori because we weren't really sure exactly how to uh, perform protocols and the things that we felt would be necessary for greeting and, and being in their land and to be here 25 years later and bear witness to a, a three hour uh, ceremony where no English is spoken. We've come a long way. And I was so proud to see this next generation leading, really. And yeah, there were some people my age chanting too, but the guys who were really young, who are taking it up a notch, the next level, who are re reinvigorating all those old cultural practices. And I just felt like our lahui will continue forever. This is a revival of Hawaiian leadership. It is a revival of uh, Hawaiian mana, a revival beyond the Renaissance of what it culturally means uh, to be a Hawaiian and empowered. It's so important, I think, to remind us of what is that ancestral knowledge that we are heirs to, that we are lucky enough to be heirs to about the land, about how we treat one another, about how we prepare our people for the future and how we survive. That's what Kalamiopu really means. We still in the, live in the same space as our ancestors did. The sun still rises the same place. And so we still look at the same kind of mele for sunrise, sunset, what the symbolic uh, meanings of these things are. Things have changed as far as the clothing, uh, we speak a different language. Most of us look different, but the space is the same. And so the space have that mana. And so the more mana added to the space, the more DNA that we have or ancestral mem memory that we have will be reawakened. We're all still tied together, just like the ahula. Um, it's just remembering that all of us together represent something greater than ourselves. Bound together, what do we want to do next? What is our future? What is our next step? What are we willing to do together? Where is it that we want to go? Hundreds of people lined up at Bishop Museum's Hawaiian Hall today for a chance to welcome home a treasured piece of Hawaiian history. Some snapped photos, others offered gifts in a chant, all to honor the return of the Ahuula and Mahiole, the feather cloak and helmet once worn by the chief Kalaniopuu of the Big Island. The unprecedented event that is really occurring for people, uh, an opportunity to further develop relationships and really 
continue to bond us in this time where you think it's about a virtual world, it's about technology, but what is joining us together is this ancient, old peace that belonged to our chief colonial people. You never know who's going to turn up when you want to provide a day for the community to uh, unveil you know, treasures like this, but we were mobbed by close to 3,000 people. I've never seen that before in the 13 years I've been here.